This is crazy. I didn't think we could fall in love. Broken from the start, chained to our past. We had closed hearts. We are breaking free. It's just you. Hey guys, Ruski here, and today we're going to be checking out Track IR. Track IR is a head tracking system that hooks to your headset, and also there's a little receiver on the monitor, on the top of your monitor that you put on the top of the monitor, and it's able to uh, directly input your head movement into a game. Now, uh, it's easy to use, it's very useful for, you know, flight sims or uh, space like ship simulators, uh, racing games, and also some infantry combat, even in Arma, uh, Track IR is useful sometimes, it really is. Um, so, today I want to talk about it because one of my fans, actually during a live stream, donated the $200 that you need to go buy the $100 or $190 package that Track IR is. And he was Twisted Joe, and I really do thank him for this. This is a big donation, and I want to give a shout out to him because he gave me $200 to go check out this track car, and that's awesome. Thank you very much, Twisted Joe. Um, it, it was a very easy setup. Once I, you know, once I got it in the mail, um, I pretty much opened it up, and it was just two pieces, and I plugged it into my computer. Pretty much, you plug in the little receiver on the top of your monitor into the same plug as the uh, emitter of the light from your headset you pretty much hook those together then you hook it into a single USB and it's pretty much ready to go after that like you are fully ready to uh, check out the program and so what I had to do I had to go online and download the software and it was a very easy download I pretty much had track error set up within 20 minutes of opening the package which was really super easy very very nice and I had it working within 20 minutes I was live streaming the entire time and it took me about 20 minutes from opening the package to finally getting in game and having it look around for me was about 20 minutes so it's very easy setup I thought it was gonna be a little bit more difficult because I've had to you know use joysticks and rudder pedals before and for stuff like DCS or something it's just really extremely hard to do that but games like Arma 3, Elite Dangerous and uh, DCS really just had presets that were ready for me to go which is nice a lot of the games that can take track IR and have it be useful will probably have a preset for track IR um, and it's really awesome to use. I hopped into Armor 3 and I seriously just looked around left and right with my person. I was like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Like, I seriously said to myself, this is like a game changer. Um, flying helicopters in Armor 3, it is definitely another game changer. At one point, I was flying without a tail rotor or just with a damaged tail rotor. So my tail rotor wasn't working at 100%. Uh, our helicopter was spinning around me. Me and Trigger, I was pilot, he was gunner. Um, and we were just flying this on a test mission, but... We lost our tail rotor and I was spinning around and I was going in for a landing and I landed exactly where I needed to land. And that's with using my, um, you know, my X52 Pro throttle and joystick. So that's pretty new uh, stuff for me. I don't really use my throttle and joystick that much as of recently. I've just used keyboard and mouse. But even with the kind of learning curve of still getting used to pr primarily the throttle, the joystick I can pretty much handle. Um, primarily getting used to the throttle and also getting used to the joystick does get me off a little bit right now. But once I'm better at both the throttle and the joystick and using track IR, I see how this is such a powerful system. I see how, you know, when I was losing my tail rotor, I could control my helicopter while looking around, which you can't in Arma. You either control your helicopter um, or you're holding alt to look around, so you cannot multitask uh, while doing that. But with track IR plus joystick and mouse, or just joystick and throttle, um, it was very easy to control the helicopter while looking behind me and the thing was is that I could actually look behind me and it wasn't just a left and right you can actually lean around your cockpit you can like actually uh, lean left and right or you can actually move left and right you can move up and down in DCS that's not in armor 3 though and you can move forward and backwards which is awesome it makes your awareness so much better of just your cockpit and when you're let, let's say landing a helicopter or something much easier than it used to be uh, definitely much easier with landing a helicopter in first person I really see why uh, track car is so much more useful I feel almost more comfortable landing a helicopter in first person now than I did in third person uh, and that's just because with track car you can look you can seriously in your cockpit lean to the side and look down 
and so you can get a better view of the bottom of your helicopter when you're landing. And if, if you're in a, like a Pawnee or a Hummingbird, those little small little bird type helicopters, you can actually lean out of the door. You can put your head outside of the helicopter and fly like a dog, like, you know, uh, <laughs> like opening his mouth outside of a car and letting his tongue flop around, you know? It, it's it's kind of funny uh, to be able to lean outside the helicopter, or lean to the right, lean to the left. Uh, if you have any support beams that are going in your way in front of the glass that are between you and what you want to see, you can just lean around them. And that, that's almost the coolest thing that I thought, especially in DCS, where I could lean down and look at some gauges and I could lean back up. That was a really cool thing. So for Arma 3, it was very useful for flying, I feel like. Um, I'm not exactly used to it in fixed wing yet, but I do see that there's also an advantage in fixed wing doing a simple dogfight with Tram. Um, definitely showed. I was like, okay, I can pr I can easily track his pl like his plane with track hour while controlling mine uh, very easily just with the joystick and throttle. It was very simple. Uh, it, it's slowly becoming instinctive of just how easy it is to look around with with the track hour. And a lot of people think that okay, if you're looking at track hour, if you're trying to control track hour and you want to look to the left, don't you have to look 90 degrees to the left? Uh, well, no, that's not the case. That's not like you don't need to look. Uh, 180 degrees backwards to actually look 180 degrees backwards in the game. It's is uh, hypersensitive or it's accelerated movement. So if you look 10 degrees to the right in real life, you probably move 30 or 40 degrees in the game, which is really useful because you can just move your head a little bit and it's not any like difficulty in that. There's no there's no strain over my neck in like an hour of flying with Track R because all I have to do is just move my head a little tiny bit and I can look all the way backwards and that's really useful. You can also turn it down to one on one ratio of movement to in game movement but I because I have only one monitor I can't really look to the sides um, so I like to have it at like a speed of 20 with a smoothness of 10 or something. Um, so Elite Dangerous, Elite Dangerous, it was really fun to use in as well. You know, space combat, you really need to be looking around a lot. Spaceships will fly around you at all directions, although the cockpit that I was in wasn't really um, a good cockpit for looking around because I was flying a Viper 3. It was very useful just to be able to see a ship fly over me or to look to my left and right without having to take off the controls. Um, very just a instinctive feeling now that I've had it for almost only 48 hours or 32 hours right now. Um, it's a very instinctive feeling and I feel like whenever I'm flying with Checker R in a year or so, it's just going to be, you know, it's going to be super easy, super simple, and it's going to make my flying a lot better. Um, and DCS, it was awesome. Like, DCS was made for track IR. Um, when, when I hopped into DCS just in a simple F-14, very simple flight model, um, I just wanted to go look at the gauges. And seriously, I lean my head down and look, like, past the joystick to go check some gauges. That was crazy to me. Like, looking, like, moving your head down. It wasn't just a looking around in a circle. Like, it wasn't just moving your head. It was literally moving your entire body down to look at something was actually mirrored in the game. And that was really cool for me. Um, and that I could literally lean down to look at something or lean above the cockpit. And so I could see a little bit easier what's in front of my nose. Or I could lean to the left, lean to the right. It was just awesome to have that, not just looking around, but also the ability to actually move around the cockpit, actually have an X and a Y and a Z. Um, being able to just actually, you know, lean forward to go look at the front of your nose or, or turn all the way around and then lean out the side so you can look at your thrusters or your, uh, your jets in the back of your fighter aircraft or something. That was really cool to me. Um, just being able to have that awareness in DCS is definitely necessary, especially when you're flying a heli or landing a jet or something, definitely necessary. Now, this is definitely overall a great product. I really enjoyed it. It's a lot of fun, and I'll definitely have more fun as you know the years come when I'm going to be a helicopter pilot in real life and stuff. A lot of simulators are going to be what I'm playing most of the time. Um, but is it worth $190? That is my question. I don't really think it's worth $190. Honestly, the two pieces that I had uh, were great quality. Uh, the little tiny piece on the top of the screen really does a good job of detecting movement. It's not it's not as buggy as like Xbox One Connect or like PS4 Move or whatever the motion things are for those. Um, the little clip for the headset plus the receiver on the top of the desktop screen was very simple to put like to set up. Uh, very intuitive. Very just easy to get used to as well. But they're little tiny pieces of plastic. I mean, the 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 piece that hooks to my headset is probably less than an eighth of a pound. Same thing goes for the receiver on the top of the monitor. Very small pieces of plastic, very just light and tiny little IR lights that are coming out of the little uh, headset adapter. 
Uh, and then the receiver is a totally custom made receiver with custom parts, but it's tiny as well. And is these two tiny pieces of plastic with a probably pretty expensive receiver on one and, and pretty much a lot of programming behind it worth $190? I don't really know. I would say if, if I saw this in a normal market, I would think it would be like around $100 or something. But that's because Track Hour really doesn't have any competition. There's IX, there's also like the, um, what do you call it, VR headsets that are coming out and stuff like that. But honestly, there's nothing that really works like Track IR. Um, and the only thing that works like Track IR is pretty much the closest thing is IX, and IX isn't even really competing against Track IR, to be honest, I think. Um, and so Track IR is pretty in a monopoly type of market, and that's why I think it's so high priced, because honestly, two pieces of plastic shouldn't be worth $190. That is like a pretty decent graphics card or a pretty decent, you know, uh, processor for your PC. Uh, having this go into these little tiny parts, I don't really know if it's exactly worth it, especially for an accessory. Like, I have two gigantic pieces of materials from Satec, a joystick and a throttle. Big chunks of material, big plastic metal, buttons, lights, uh, you know, I don't even know what to call these little, like, modular manual, uh, twisters and different buttons and different, like, a spring and all, all this technology going to one piece. And the Satec, thr like the Satec throttle and joystick, were like 160, and uh, and then I have this little tiny piece of plastic on my headset, little tiny track R, and it's 190. But I mean, this is donated to me, so I'm not complaining. But I'm complaining for other people that want to get this product, and that if they lowered the price to something like at least 120, or at most like 150, they would get a lot more customers, especially me. I probably would have already gotten it. This, the price is pretty steep for both these two products, and I think that's why um, I haven't gotten it yet, even though you see me do lots of helicopter tutorials and lots of plane tutorials on my channel. It's definitely an awesome product. I really do rate it like a 9 out of 10, but the 1 out of 10 that's missing is because of the price. Um, so guys, thanks for watching. This is Operator Juski. I'm, I'm really excited for this product to see where it goes in my future of flying helicopters in Arma or flying stuff in DCS or Elite Dangerous. I'm really excited to just see how instinctive it gets to me and how much I um, learn it and how much I understand it so that I can be more effective at flying in games. I, I do want to make another review in like a year or so, you know, kind of going over it in a year saying, okay, this is what I've learned now that I'm like pretty much instinctive with it because I'm instinctive of flying helicopters in Armor 3 with a keyboard. Um, and that's definitely super easy for me. Like I can, I can fly anything in Armor 3 just with a keyboard. I don't even have to have a throttle, joystick, uh, track IR, anything. I can fly anything with a keyboard. And once I get to that stage with my joystick, throttle, uh, rudders, and track IR, maybe we'll see what happens in the future, just see how comfortable I am with that. But that will be in a year or so, <laughs> and so I'll make that later on. But thanks, guys, for watching. Um, how I got this was that Joey donated on a stream. So if you want to support my channel as well, you can go actually to my channel and click the little right side. You can click support this channel. There's a little blue button. Or in a stream, you can also click the I at the top of the thing, as well as in some videos, the I is there as well. You can click the I at the top of the video player, and you're able to actually donate any price you want, $1, you know, two cents. I don't really know if you can download or actually donate two cents. But uh, if you want to support my channel that way and get me some new products, that would be awesome because I can cover any products you guys want me to. And this was a really cool thing to happen. Like, this is the first thing I've really been given um, in my YouTube channel. I've had a few donations and I've invested into getting a new monitor, but uh, having something like this happen where a guy just says, hey, here's the money, go get this, was pretty cool because then I can just uh, increase the quality of my YouTube videos with this product, have track our helicopter flight videos, have track our jets, uh, Elite Dangerous gameplay, DCS gameplay maybe later on, I don't really know, but this is an awesome opportunity and thank you Joey for donating this track IR to me. So guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Oh my god! <laughs>